Hi, everyone. Instagram almost killed me. There was a recent study done in the University College of London linking high use of Instagram to eating disorders. But it's not just a statistic. It happened to me. Meet Ming Bridges at 12 years old. I went to Tangling Trust School. I was in year seven, form 7.3, Mrs. Pa's teacher group, and a proud member of Elang. I remember this was the first year my mom let me go out by myself shopping with friends, although I found out later on she was always spying at me, on me through the whole time. I loved these um, website games called Neopets and Habit Hotel. I'm not really sure if they're still around, so that's why I mentioned them. Um, dressing up with my sister and making music videos and I'd always rush home after school to go on MSN to chat with my friends on group chat while trying to get my homework done. So this is a picture from the school social that year, and the theme was to dress as somebody famous. So I dressed as myself from the future because I was going to be a rock star. So this is me as a rock star in the future. <laughs> Meet me at 14 years old. I had just won a major singing competition and was signed to a management label for singing. After this competition, I quickly learned about all the flaws I had. First of all, my forehead was too big. So what they would do at photo shoots was they would take my hair and kind of like put it across to try and make my forehead look smaller and make a fringe. I found out that my left side was my better side, so I should always pose with my left side forward. And I figured out that I had to extend my legs and tiptoe to make myself look longer and slender, no matter how awkward it made me feel. I went on to make a Christmas album that year and be the star in a lead award-winning children's TV show where I cut my hair into full bangs to cover my forehead. I started feeling more and more isolated from school. With my newfound fame, friends had told me I had changed and I found myself feeling not good enough at school and not good enough at work. So I threw myself into my work. This is me at 17. I moved from Singapore to London and had gone there to focus more on IB. Whilst I was there, I got bullied and teased a lot for my singer status, and I quickly came to realize that I didn't really want to be a singer as a full-time career, because it made me feel too insecure. By this time, I was also spraying my fringe to the side by myself every single day, because I was very, very insecure about my forehead. <laughs> but having said that, I had a great time at school doing normal 17-year-old things, going partying, chasing boys, crying with my friends through IB, um, making loads of friends, etc. Meet Ming at 19. I had come back to Singapore to start my gap year. And the plan was I was going to make some money singing and then go on to travel with my friends around the world. So that was the plan. Um, I joined a management company, and the first thing they told me I had to do was I had to lose weight because I was too fat. So they recommended for me to go on a two-week diet of eating only meat, which I'd now come to know as the Atkins diet. But later on, they texted me saying, mm, maybe that's a bit too harsh. Maybe you can try and figure out another way to diet to lose weight. So before this point, I had never, ever, ever thought about losing weight. I love McDonald's. Um, I never exercise, I was naturally slim, so I just never really crossed my mind. So the first thing I did was I cut out McDonald's, I started exercising, and naturally, just by being healthier, I lost weight. But by doing this, I started to become more and more focused on my body. And then I started taking an interest in articles about superfoods, nutrition, how to get abs in 10 days, the perfect body, and I started to become more obsessed with trying different diets. At this point, I was eating about 1,500 calories a day, as stated as the optimal amount in magazines. But then I'd end up binging at night like crazy. And I wouldn't understand why, because I thought, how could I be so hungry? At this point, Instagram had just started up. And I got told to join it because it would help my career. And at first, I was posting pictures of my work, my face, my food, things I was doing, places I would go. But as I got more and more body confident, I Started, I posted a picture of myself wearing a tight top and a tight skirt. That day, I hadn't eaten much, and I ended up having a massive binge. And as I was slumped on the kitchen floor, in the midst of my sugar coma despair, my phone started buzzing uncontrollably. 
and I found that I had got onto the Instagram worldwide popular page. And I was so, so happy. I called my cousin up and we were both screaming like this was the best thing that had ever happened to me. From having only two comments and a few likes, I was getting hundreds of comments and thousands of likes saying how pretty I was, how people wanted to be just like me, how envious they were of my body. And I felt such a sense of belonging and of acceptance and achievement. And it was all down to my weight. From that day onwards, I promised myself I would never binge again. And I'd be more strict to myself than ever. This is me at 20 years old. I was anorexic. Although I myself and my family did not believe I was anorexic. We thought that I was just extremely skinny and I had a really weird problem with food. Not in a million years did we think this would happen to me. I remember being in a restaurant with my mum and she was trying to get me to eat a piece of bread. And I put it in my mouth and I couldn't swallow it. And we both sat there holding each other's hands and crying because we didn't know what to do. I remember going to Topshop and trying on a UK size 4 skirt and it was too big for me. And I sat on the floor and looked at myself at how disgusting I looked. I was just skin and bone and I cried because I didn't understand why I just didn't want to put on weight even though I knew how awful I looked. And the thing was during this time, comments just kept flooding in on social media telling me how amazing I looked and just kept me going. I didn't have room in my head for anything else but food and my body. I didn't see friends. I fought with my parents and I pushed everyone away. Every day all I'd think about was counting down the seconds to my next meal. And at night I would stay awake thinking of all the favorite foods I wanted to eat. At this point as well, I was in Taiwan being a Mandarin pop star. And when I was there, things only got worse. Not having my period was seen as was glorified as a sign of how skinny I was. There were articles published about my weight plummeting to 43 kilos, and I barely had any energy to move. Sometimes for dinner, all I'd eat was vegetables. But, but it wasn't just my eating that was controlled. Every day was planned down to the second. I would have dance classes every day, even though I felt very awkward dancing on stage. I would have facials because your skin had to be as white as snow, and tanning was a big no-no. I would have stage classes where I would have to pretend to sing and they would just teach me how to move around and this was daily. And lastly, I'd have a lot of interview classes teaching me all the right things to say. Basically, I had to be anybody but myself. As a very introverted person, I thought there was something extremely wrong with me as they pushed me to be more and more extroverted. I had to be the funniest, the craziest, the loudest, the prettiest, the most adorable, the cutest, the most interesting person. And I wasn't just a singer, I was an entertainer. I was like their puppet, and I just, with my diet, did not have the energy to do it. All I wanted was to stay home after a long day on the couch with my cousin and relax, but instead I'd have to go out and try and mingle with cool people. And everyone on the outside kept telling me how envious they were and how lucky I was to be where I was, but no one knew how much I was suffering. So this is me at 22. My body had given up allowing me to starve, and I slowly started to gain weight. I would wake up every morning at 5 a.m. to do three hours of dragon boat training to try and stay slim, but this soon became too much for me. I remember going to Malaysia for a cover shoot for a magazine, and in the midst of having my outfit change, I could hear the guys outside talking about how fat I was. And by this point, I had only gained a few kilos, so I was still very much underweight. When the magazine came out, People called me up congratulating me, saying how happy and how proud I must be to be on a magazine cover. But all I could think about was that I was too fat and I wasn't good enough. Prior to that, I had starved myself for five days, only eating a few mouthfuls of dinner. But I just wished I had starved myself more. I really thought that I would have to diet for the rest of my life to be accepted. And so began the cycle of starving myself for a few days and then binging on crap. And I quickly gained 40 kilos in two years. My Instagram was then full of throwback photos because I was too embarrassed to show people how I truly looked like. I thought no one would accept me and no one would love me for who I really was. And when I did post the photo of myself kind of chubbier than I had been when I was anorexic, I would have comments like, what happened? And are you pregnant? I remember, I remember going on Singapore Airlines 
and an air steward came up to me and asked me if I was Ming Bridges' sister. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. I couldn't tell him that I was actually Ming Bridges because I thought he'd judge me and I felt humiliated. At that point, I didn't want to be alive. I hated myself and I was so angry at myself that I couldn't control my weight. I didn't see anybody. I pushed everyone out and I isolated myself. I told myself I could only go outside again once I was good enough. When I finally did lose some weight, I published, a, well, I released a new song because before that I couldn't release any music because I was too out of image. After the press conference, the next day I was so happy because I got my first full page newspaper article about me. But it wasn't about my music. It was about my weight, with this picture on the front, which the people had dug up with my Instagram, along, alongside a picture of myself on that day. I went on detox retreats, boot camps. I got certified as a holistic health practitioner. I went to see hypnotherapists. I had acupuncture. And take it from someone who's tried everything. It doesn't work. I was so focused on my body, and the more focused I was, the more and more weight I gained, and the more depressed I was. I finally gave up and went to hospital for eating disorders. And with the help of, the, uh, with the help of a therapist, I finally managed to separate my self-worth from my weight. But it took a lot, a lot of soul searching and a lot of deep brainwashing. This is me at 24. And I love this photo because this is the first birthday in five years that I did not starve myself and I got to eat all my yummy birthday food. My mom and dad took me to a restaurant and we stuffed ourselves silly with Japanese food and we had five desserts and we were all so happy that we'd all come out on the other side together. I dyed my hair blue just because I wanted to and I was surrounded with friends who truly cared for me for who I am. I grew up and realized what really mattered and that it wasn't my weight. I learned more and more about the importance of knowing myself every day. And accepting who I am has made the greatest difference in my life. I find the more I know myself, the easier it is not to get swayed by what other people are doing or what other people think you should be doing. To think about the amount of times I've gone on a diet just because I've watched a documentary or read an article instead of listening to what my body wants or taking advice from someone because it worked for them, not even considering if the same advice would work for me. If I could get you guys to take away anything from today is that there's no point trying to be somebody else. I wasted five years of my life trying to be someone I wasn't, and I'm only now trying to make up for that time. But it's still a daily battle for me and for most people out there. The thing is, media is not just in the magazines or on TV anymore. It's all around us. It's in our hands. It basically is us, and we're all posting the best of the best. I need you to step away and realize or to figure out who you are, because who you are on the screen and who you are in person is never the same. I have so many friends who are celebrities online. They look like they're having the best lives ever. But in real life, many are depressed, have eating disorders, and no periods, because they feel they have to be this way. The key is to go on your own journey. Question things, find out who you are, and surround yourself with people to help you on this journey. And read, read a lot. I love reading books and they really, really helped me. So if anyone needs any recommendations, please do ask. Be inspired, take advice, learn, but know your intentions and know who you are. Because at the end of the day, this is your life and you've got to do you. I feel truly blessed to have had the opportunities I've had and to be able to share them with you. So maybe you can learn from what I've learned on my journey. Thank you very much.